Hi, welcome to On The Daily, a podcast about finding the acoustic you. I'm your host, Danielle McCleary. I am a serial optimist and a champion of people who has long been on a search to truly see people and help you peel back all of your layers and become the most acoustic, authentic, and best version of yourself. I'm so glad you're here. Let's dive in. On The Daily Family, do I have a treat for you today? So if you listen to this podcast, you know that I <laughs> I talk about Lululemon a lot and it's because the teachings of that I've received through Lululemon, whether it be through goals coaching or clearings, you name it, the people that I've met there, the connections that I've built there, the confidence that company has given me, it all comes from these trainings and these teachings that this guest, Suzanne Conrad, has co-created with Lululemon. And she's here today. And we are talking all about goals. We are talking all about leaving behind past feelings of self-worth and adapting new ones. And this episode, if you are in a season of your life where you feel like you are stuck, this is your episode. Suzanne Conrad is the founder of a company called Lightyear Leadership. She has a book coming out called Get Here Now. She creates coaches and seminars and workshops all over the globe. She has worked and licensed her teachings, her trainings, her method to places like Hilton and Lululemon. She's incredible. She's a mom. She's a wife. She's a grandma. She's all the things. And she's going to rock your freaking world. So I'm so excited for you to hear this episode. I have to tell you about my new favorite CBD company. Their name is Equilibria. They are women owned. They are POC owned and they are just dope freaking humans. These girls are changing the game in my opinion for what CBD is and can be. When you order from them, you get a dosing specialist, somebody to help you learn about CBD. And it's all hemp CBD, so you're not going to get high. There's no there's no hallucin- like hallucinatory THC, nothing like that in it. It is all just for wellness. And when you meet with a dosing specialist, they teach you what you should be using CBD for, when you should be taking it, how much you should be taking. And then you can also get your questions answered. So if you do have any reservations around taking CBD, maybe you have other medications you're on or other illnesses and you want to know if you know it's going to mix well, they will answer all of your questions. They have nurses, they have geniuses, scientists, all the things working with them. And so I have really been loving getting to know them. Their product is amazing. Their product packaging is so beautiful. If you do want to check them out, go to Equilibria's website. Use my code Danielle on the daily at checkout. You will get 15% off your order. And tell me what you think because I'm obsessed. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I was asked to try Organifi, which is a superfood company. And I am always down to try things that are good for me. And I have been using their red drink and their gold drink. Their red drink is all of your essential reds. Your gold drink is all of your turmeric and things that help you kind of wind down at the end of the night. I've been using them for a couple of weeks now and I've really noticed a difference. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables as it is, but having a dedicated red drink to make sure that I'm getting all of my beets and reds, raspberries, apples, all of my reds, fruits and veggies into my system very quickly. And then having a turmeric infused drink to have at night to calm me down and get my head away from any of the stress that's happening in my life. I'm obsessed with these products. I think you will be too. If you are interested in giving them a shot, head over to Organifi.com. Use my code on the daily for 20% off. And let me know what you think. I'm loving them. So give them a shot. See if you like them too. And if you are just joining the podcast, welcome to the On The Daily family. All the episodes you hear on this podcast are not in sequential order. So pick one that resonates with you, dive in, and then skip around a little bit. Find the titles that call to you and hear them. We have episodes every Tuesday and Friday, and we are so glad that you are here. So without further ado my friends, Suzanne Conrad. 
Hello on the Daily Family. Oh man, I feel like I am in the presence of a celebrity. This is Suzanne Conrad. Hi, how are you? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thanks for inviting me. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you for saying yes. So fun fact for everybody listening, I've actually never met Suzanne in person, but one of the things that... I was very drawn to is the fact all the work that she's done with Lululemon. I am a Lululemon ambassador and I start every one of my episodes with a clearing, which you know very well. (laughs) So, which we're going to totally get into in this episode. So I'm, I'm very excited to dive in, but I would love for us to just start with a clearing anything. I'll let you go first because you are a guest and I don't need to explain to you what that is. (laughs) Okay. Well, so if if anyone's listening to this and this is their first time, a clearing is really designed so that a person can take self-responsibility for their energy and their space and share anything that would prevent them from being completely present. So Danielle doesn't need to fix me or change me or solve what it is. It's just simply to say what needs to be said or expressed so that I can be fully present here with her for the time that we're creating this recording. So I'm just going to go look and see, is there anything that I need to share, to be clear and to be here? Well, I've been making big decisions in my life and it's the end of a huge week. And I care very much about making a difference in your life, Danielle. So that's what I'd like to say to, to be clear and to be here. Wow. I am, I was, <laughs> I don't get nervous to do interviews and you are the first person that I've gotten a little nervous about because I respect the work that you do so much and it is so much, it, it's like so ingrained into who I am now, like just over the years, just like it's become so ingrained into me that I got a little nervous before this. And I'm just so, I'm so grateful that this worked out. Obviously, we were connected through our friend Luca, and I will be forever indebted to him because of this connection. So that is one thing I would like to share with you. Okay, wonderful. So, so are, are, are we clear? I'm clear. You clear? Let's dive yes. in. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> okay. So I want everyone to just know who is Suzanne Conrad in this moment today that we are recording this. Like, who are you? What? And you can, you can tell us a little of your story if that feels good for you. But I just want to know, like, who are you at your very core? Who <laughs> who is Suzanne? It's like a who song, you know, who are you? Okay. So who I am today is a glorious ecstatic accumulation of all the choices and decisions I've made across my 60 and a half years, I suppose. And so today, you know, I'm about to become an author. I have a book that will be across all the airports in September of 2021, called Get There Now. And Danielle, that's like the longest goal. I had to keep, I had to keep putting it out and out and out. It's what I would have called a rolling goal. I I first had it for 2012. (laughs) So I just have to flip it over to 2021. But so who I am today, I'm the mother of four adult children, the grandmother of two children, the founder of Light Your Leadership, the wife of Brett Conrad, who is an incredible, generous leader in progressive and innovative finance. And I am a loving daughter to my mother, Trula. And I am a community member now in St. George, Utah. So during COVID, I moved from 18 years in Santa Monica and came here really to support a new life where I also live with my mother, who's 88, and I work with my daughter, Hunter, who's 27, and she's the chief experience officer of Light Your Leadership. So who I am today is in the middle of a powerful feminine leadership lineage. And how is that? How does that feel? Well, I feel like the three of us, along with all the people we touch, have really done a lot of good work that's relevant today for the things people are concerned about regarding 
systemic uh, abuse of power. And the work that we do in Light Your Leadership is really about forgiving the previous generation and empowering the future generation with the very best that we can provide in our legacy while we're living. So we have work to do, Danielle. Yeah, we do. (laughs) But you, I mean, you are on the ground, like doing the work. So I commend that. I want to take it back a little bit. I, I've, I've been like looking at, I got like, <laughs> I went down a Suzanne Conrad rabbit hole a couple weeks ago and I listened to your podcast episode with Luca on the Passion Place. I looked at your website for Light Your Leadership and I just kept like, I know a little bit of your story and how all of these, you said these like, it's a, it's a culmination of all of these brilliant and magnificent choices you've made to bring you to where you are. I want to know what were some of those choices? Tell us about like how, let's, let's take it back to as far back <laughs> as you want to go. How did, oh. where did, where did this, like this beautiful being of light come from? Like where was, how did, how did you today get here? Well, I don't wish this for everyone. But I'd say that what's allowed me to have the life I have today is a whole lot of self-forgiveness and what we call take twos. So, you know, in, in, in my book, Get There Now, I do share some of the stories about all of the not great decisions and choices I made, which a lot of times, Danielle, it's also a decision to not make a decision. I don't know if you've ever had those places in your life where I know for me, there's places where I've hesitated and stayed in relationships too long, stayed at the fair too long, at the great harm of my life. So <laughs> if, if I go if I go to the top hits of bad, bad Suzanne Conrad concerts, you know, even though I had a, a deep background as a 14 through 18-year-old in Louisville, Kentucky, helping people go across the river to Indiana to get abortions, during forced busing and all this racism stuff. So I actually know where babies come from. (laughs) And she knows. I know. And so one of the things that, that happened in my life was I became pregnant very young, you know, at 20 and a mother at 21. And so I'd say that experience really led a lot to what you now see in light your leadership because I had to grow up faster. So that would be one story. Do you want me to tell you a couple or what would you yeah, like? You tell, want me, to yeah, tell me a couple. String a couple pearls here. Yeah, <laughs> string a couple pearls for us, Suzanne. <laughs> so so in that one, you know, there was a certain amount of of shame and mistiming and along with just the ecstatic joy of giving birth. So it had me grow my heart for myself, but also for other people. So I feel like even though I am a a white woman of privilege, I feel that that early experience gave me a greater empathy for people and also a greater empathy of people attempting to educate themselves. So, you know, it took me six years to get through college. I needed to trade babysitting with friends. I you know, and all the while I stay in the marriage because that's what you did then. And I have another son and that compounds it. And the man who's my husband doesn't really know how to provide. There's, there's lots of things going on there that are, I'd say toxic and a problem. And so I needed to, it took me longer than most people to really exit that game. It actually took me easily 10 years from when I entered it. I don't, I don't know if you really know that. So it's, it's, you don't get to say, oh, I'm so proud of how long it took me to figure this out. And yet, you know, it lets me have grace and patience for people as they unwind their way that they got up the tree. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're saying. I, uh, a little a little story about me in case you don't know this, but in case anybody listening doesn't know this, I got married when I was 20. 
and to the, you know, my high school sweetheart and moved to England, left school. It took me six years to finish school as well. And I stayed in a marriage too long because I'm also a Sagittarius. I say this a lot and it's a real thing. I am a fire sign. And so when I do something, oh, I'm going to make it work. And so I stayed for way too long in something that I knew probably from the beginning. I mean, it it sounds, I have to like pause before I say it, but I knew the moment I walked down the aisle when I was 20 that this was not what I needed to be doing. And at the same time, I had some of the best adventures in that marriage. So you kind of, it, it's, it's, I love hearing you say that it's stuff that you look back on and go, oh, it's, is it proud that it took me 10 years? And there's a duality there, right? The lessons that you've learned who have, who, that have allowed you to become who you are today with this amazing company that works with amazing brands to teach them. I think your website says to put adventure into their life. I mean, tell me about, tell me about like, like your leadership. I just want to know, I want to know about it. Well, I feel that all of us are on an adventure. So in our brand, we use the idea of people are explorers. And so we are explorers of the outer world, you know, that traveling, of course, and learning and growing and expanding our careers and creating families, but we're also explorers of our inner life. And as you said, your body knew when you were walking down the aisle, right? <laughs> you guys, you want to you wanna have a video podcast so you could just see this super cute face she just made. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, a, it was like a, oh yeah. It was oh, a, oh yeah. yeah. Face. <laughs> so, so anyway, what light your respects is that each person has a unique way to explore and explore their universe and what we would call their innerverse. So we know that there's easily 90 million miles of capillaries within our body, you know, pumping oxygen to our heart. And those capillaries are just as intelligent as what we consider inside our brain, that neck up part. So light your leadership is best in the world at activating the innate intuition that comes from the body's knowledge. And from that, we really can be best in the world at how we develop light your coaches. Because right now, I'd say that arena is still uh, lagging behind where the world really needs it to be. And your generation has done an excellent job of connecting their bodies with their brains. That's true. That's true. You know, millennials get a bad rap, but we connect our bodies with our brains very well. Well, I'm the mother of four millennials. I, so I span the whole thing. So Curtis is about to turn 25 and my eldest son, Surya, is 39. So I also believe in intergenerational mentorship and I allow all my children to play their playlists to me what are they listening to? And, and my grandchildren, what are you learning? And, and I let them contribute to me. So I'd say light year is about that cycle of contribution inside families and also inside the lineage of teachers and students. Yeah. What would you say is the number one area of opportunity in leadership right now? The number one area is for human beings to have the courage to examine what they believe is true and real and important about the world from the lens of their beliefs around their creation. Because at the end of the day, the wars that we're fighting, the ones in the outer world, tend to have a basis in deep-seated beliefs that allow human beings to dehumanize each other and kill each other. I feel like Lightyear's been a pioneer in asking people to look deeply at beliefs that perhaps are shaping their leadership from old patterns that aren't really what they want today. And at least in North America, we have, correctly so, in our constitution, separated church and state. Yet, unless a person in their own self-leadership really examines, you know, who is my God? Who, what is that? What, what do I, 
You know, is it money? Is it this? Is it that? Unless we examine that and can talk about it, I feel we haven't potentiated leadership. And I'd say that's the greatest opportunity we face. I love that. I also, I love what you said about who your God is. Is it money? Because that's so real, right? I mean, we think of God as this divine entity, right? And I, I'm not a, I've, I've never been a religious person. I was not raised religious. I have ultimate respect for anybody who does have faith. I respect faith to my core. I believe in the universe. I believe in this divine light that we are all connected to, this source that we are all connected to. But for some people, yeah, I mean, it, it really does. The the God that you, that each person has can be so different. It's just, you just really, you said that in such a really profound way. Well, it's kind of sweet because Brett just walked in. He doesn't have to be on the podcast. So so when we do this conversation with him, for instance, that so this can either be in your content or not, but it could be helpful. So there's many people who grow up without a structured spiritual path that they inherit. And then there's people who do grow up in one that they inherit, and they're going to need to make choices in it. So in either case, as people evolve their leadership, in light year, we ask people as one of our principles we have the principle happy face versus unhappy face God, where a person can shift from fear and doubt to faith and patience. So Brett, as an engineer, as a father, as a Leadville 100 three-time mountain biker, he would say something similar to what you said. And, and his version of it is really interesting because he's like, well, simply from a design perspective, the fact that every snowflake is unique, the fact that this forest is ever-changing, there's an intelligence and there is a design to life that I want to align with and attune with. So Brett would say, you know, that's his access. And then, and then as a leader, he knows what he's leaning on when he's making choices and decisions. I love that. I, you just reminded me, you know, somebody and this, this might be so off topic, but we'll bring it back. We'll wrap, we'll, we'll rein it back in. (laughs) Somebody told me the other day, and it was supposed, I know that it was supposed to be an insult. And it was, um, you change like the seasons. And I, I took a second and I was, I just kind of very calmly said, well, if we didn't have seasons, the planet that we exist on would quite literally decay and stop. So thank you is my answer to that. Uh, I, I le- I think you said something when you were describing your leadership and the opportunity was that people try to exist in old patterns that they may not be that may not be the truth anymore for them, and that is so real. I want to elaborate on that. I I see. I, you know, I run I run a business. I work as a leader for. I work for SoulCycle, so I I train new instructors. I you know in my business I train I like work with people to build their own businesses and one of the things that we always talk about is just because it was done this way at one point, that may not be the truth for you, which means you are allowed to align, to more closely align with your truth so that you can be the most authentic leader you can be moving forward. I want to just like expand on that because I I feel like we're, we speak the same language on this. (laughs) Well, first of all, back to the accidental compliment about the seasons. So in light year, when people go through training with us, it is when they're in the coach training, it's for an entire year. And that's our name. And light a light year is actually a unit of distance. It's not a unit of speed. It's how far light travels in a year. And so it can travel really far. So the fact that you are this ever-evolving, changing being, moving through the seasons of your life, finding new cycles of authenticity is brilliant and genius. And really, we are never the same, even second to second. And the person that believes we stay the same is actually in an illusion. Yeah, yes, 100%, completely in an illusion. And trying to hold on to something that I see it all the time. I always tell people, break free of that. Because the second you break free of that, some of those demons that come to haunt you from time to time, they'll go away, you know, or they'll they'll change into something beautiful. But if you're not willing to let go of those patterns that are holding you here, 
then growth is not going to happen. Change is not going to happen. Evolution for sure is not going to happen. Yeah. So it's a delicate balance. And uh, so so for your listeners, I, I think a distinction that Danielle and I want to make for you is that some things are eternal. There are things that are eternal and you can count on them and it, and there's a stability and a rightfulness about them. And the changing of the seasons is one of them. It, it's actually one of the stabilizing things that allows us to, to grow in our humanity you know, going through cycles, going through, you know, I'm just now in the earlier part of the beginning of having completed menopause. And so one of the only other mammals where the leader is a a post reproductive feminine is the killer whale. And, and, And the killer whale, it's the eldest female whale that leads the pod. And that's because She's navigating a three dimensional environment, and we need the one with the greatest wisdom. So I always thought that's kind of interesting. So I see that one of the futures we're also creating with this intergenerational learning is where, you know, someone in your generation has the freedom to grow and learn and have complete self expression while they receive the wisdom from the other lines so that they can be prepared for when you're really leading the earth. And that will happen. Yeah. Yes. Undoubtedly. (laughs) Undoubtedly, that is another eternal thing. Undoubtedly, you will be that someday. That is going to be your truth someday. It's interesting that you said that, you know, we're talking about how change is a good thing, but the changing of the seasons, the fact that the sun rises and falls every day, those changes that are eternal isn't it interesting how things can just like dually exist? You know, it's a change and it's beautiful and there's an, that's eternal and that will happen. And because of that, you can find comfort in that. So it's almost like saying you can find comfort in the ability to evolve. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, when I was in my twenties and there in that early marriage, and having babies, we would go to the Bodhi Tree bookstore a lot. They don't have it anymore in Los Angeles, but it had all the spiritual books and all these wonderful things. And a lot of the ways that Eastern teachers teach is exactly through what you said is through the koan. It's through the paradox. It's through that finding the oneness in the tension of changing and constant, the yin and the yang of it. So I, I, that's great. And you probably bring that right onto your seat when you're leading a spin class, because that's, that's also what people need as they move, you know, to find growth in their movement and explore those 90 million miles of capillaries. <laughs> I want to talk about, because I couldn't have you on here without talking about the work you've done with Lululemon, because... I've been a Lula. I, first, I was an educator for Lululemon, and then I was an ambassador, and now I'm a legacy ambassador for one store and a current ambassador for another. And so, the Lululemon goals coaching, the five year, the ten year goal, you had such you have you've had a big part in that. And I would love to I would love to dive in because I think it's like such a it's such a beautiful practice, one that I've now I use in every. I mean, it, I use it with my son. I use it in my personal life. I use it with my relationships. I lo- use it in business. I like, Everywhere I use what I've learned at Lululemon and you had such a big part of that. So I want to just talk about, I want to know the importance of, in your mind, in your opinion, in your experience, the importance of like writing your goals down, manifesting a five-year plan, manifesting a 10-year plan, I want to know, like, the, even the importance of, of clearing sometimes, how you explained it so beautifully. Just tell us from your experience why those things are so important in this beautiful life that we live. Hmm. Well, we're either going to transform through circumstance or transform through choice. And I would prefer to transform through choice and be responsible for the circumstances I'm in instead of created by them. So the first tool to be able to really generate choice is the vision. 
And many times, you know, I have to giggle because all those years working with wonderful yogis and all, they'd say, oh, I don't want to constrain myself to a vision. I don't want to have to come in. And I'm like, well, look, here's the deal. Somewhere in that beautiful mind of yours, you already have a vision and it might be an anti-vision. It's a default vision. There's something in there creating. And so first of all, you better go check and see what it is. Because as we spoke earlier in our conversation about these inherited beliefs and incorrect beliefs, you know, it created a marriage for me that wasn't great. You know, I I was like, that was my circumstance vision. So we want to have a a vision of choice and we want to have it far enough out from our current life so that we have that gap of wonder and mystery and possibility that extends our brain beyond the thinking of, well, how am I going to do it? How am I going to get enough money? How am I, how am I going to go to school? And because then that thing will sour all of it. So the first thing is to have it be far enough out and based in choice so that the person can just really get new air and new space to exist and to explore. Then I would say, Goals are important to come from the vision. So since you're listening to this as an audio recording, let me just give you this picture. Imagine someone in there now and they're burdened by all their beliefs and voices and all of that stuff and coulda, shoulda, woulda. And imagine that as a backpack and they want to get to a new future. What we do in the light year work, which is what we did at Lululemon, is a person begins with a future where they've already remembered the future, so to speak, and it's already worked out, and they work backwards, back to the now, instead of trying to drag themselves in their current state and have a lesser outcome. So I want to just make that clear as a as a second step. And then, can I tell, the, can I tell you a um, tell me a story? Now I want to tell you a story. So I, this is what, as somebody who's done the work many times, I've done many goals coaching nights at Lululemon. So from somebody, a student of your teachings, I want to tell you that for me, writing down where my life is going to be in one year, where my life is going to be in five years, where my life is going to be in 10 years, what that has done for me in my life has I have the, so I put something on a five year goal. To me, that's already happening now. That's happening. It's not. It's not a. It's not a matter of hope. I hope it happens. No, I wrote it down. I've asked for it from the universe, from God, whoever, and that is that's happening. And now, like you said, I have all. There's space in between for. A possibility for the winds to change, for things to happen, de- like detours along the way. But there is a that that's there, and that I'm coming for that. And I cannot tell you, as a student of this, how powerful that has been in my life. Because I, as I stand here today, I have been married. I've been divorced. I was in a relationship with my son's father. We got pregnant very quickly, had this child, chose to not stay together, but be very close. We are very good friends for our son. And now I'm engaged to the most amazing woman in the entire world. And she is every, she is my match. But I go back and I look at my five year plan, my 10 year plan. And even if it's not exact, it's exactly what I asked for. It's exactly what I declared. So what I'm saying, if you're listening to this right now, this shit works, you guys. This shit works. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 let's talk a little bit about about writing goals and why those are important and also writing the vision. So in light year we have people, we have a we've built our own custom environment that's ad-free. So if you could imagine a LinkedIn is about your past and light year is all about your future. So you have a, my future profile and we support each other and who we're becoming. So in, in the technology of writing a vision and seeing it. So we ask people to sense what it, what do you hear, see, smell, taste, then what's around you. And you write that vision based in a sensorial experience. So you're bringing all the senses in 
and language. So what that does is that integrates the left and the right hemisphere of the brain and has it cross the corpus callosum so that you're increasing the probability and possibility of that order kind of getting to the Amazon of your supernatural life, right? Because you've got to get an order in. Otherwise, you know, what's going to get shipped to you is the circumstance life. <laughs> so. Yeah, if you just go online and you go, you know what, Amazon, send me anything. Yeah. Guaranteed, you're getting some crazy you're stuff. Getting some crazy <laughs> stuff. So, so that's on the level of the vision. And then in the level of the goal, you know, you, you likely are familiar with the first person present tense in the affirmative with a specific condition of satisfaction and a by when so that it's, you know, I want, I want a size 10 swim top that's fuchsia by Thursday, you know, so a goal, a goal has, has all those qualities to it. And I came from, so when I entered the world of Lululemon in 1999, I came from the first four years of studying with Dorothy Espio, who was my teacher. And I studied with her through the rest of her life and continued to study with her successor. And what Dorothy would tell us if she was here, so we might as well bring her with us, is that there's... Come on in, Dorothy. Come on in, Dorothy. So, so Dorothy would tell us that there's really four forms of, let's call it prayer, of communicating, communing. One is petition. It's writing. So writing the goal. The second one is meditation, silence. So being, as you said, it's already happening. So that's a type of meditation, being with it. So petition, meditation, and then there's supplication. So that's body movement. So sometimes maybe when you're spinning, you see that vision or you recall that goal. Okay. So we start to bring all those together where we have petition, we have meditation, silence, we have supplication, and then we have the spoken word or singing. <laughs> you can sing your goal. But when you combine all four of those, it starts to activate something. And one of the things, so I had already been studying with Dorothy when I began you know, my journey with Lululemon, which included first creating a, a technology platform for them in the early days when they were expanding. My husband, Brett, and I moved from Boulder to Santa Monica to open the first three United States stores, the Santa Monica store, the Newport store, and Cow Howell. And as we were doing that, I'm studying with Dorothy and I'm looking at like, oh, how do we get it so that person has this whole body experience, share with their community what their goal is, write it down, be specific, meditate with it, visualize it, and then sweat on it. See, we put it all together. I mean, I'm, I grew up a professional dancer as well. So, for, <laughs> oh yeah, for me, like, movement, me like the moving meditation, the sweating on your, like, that's why I was so drawn to A, Lululemon, B, Soul Cycle, right? Because here's this, these places where I can come, I can put it all on paper, I can declare what it is that I am worthy of in this life. And then I can go and I can sweat on it. I mean, it is, you put it all together. And it's such a freaking beautiful, beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you for that work that you did with that company because it it is a game changer. It really is. And it's what so many, so many brands are doing now. Everybody's doing that. Like it's everybody's in some way making sure that the people that they're serving in their communities, whether it be employee welfare or community welfare, so many brands, the ones who I feel are doing it the best are the ones that are really thinking about this kind of stuff. Well, and you know, some of the OGs of Lululemon, you know, when they got together and wrote the vision for the company in the early years, you know, Jenna Hills, Deanne and Delaney Schweitzer, you know, all, all of that team, what they created and, and really what, what Chip created is he said, you know, we want to be bigger than Nike and we want to have at least a hundred competitors. We want people to do what we do. So there was never a selfishness about like, 
this is our thing. They, that That's part of what my role became as I declared myself the director of possibility. You know, I was never an employee of Lululemon. I've always been my own company. I licensed my intellectual property and co-created with Lululemon. And so when we said all that and, and did all that, the company would send me all around the country and then later around the globe to really share the possibility that human beings have to set themselves free. And the fact that more companies are doing that, amen. Uh, and I believe now after COVID, it's very likely that people now want to have work that works. They don't need an overseer. What they need are self-responsibility and self-leadership tools that let them be accountable for achieving their work without somebody checking. Oh, wait, did you do that, Daniel? Wait, are you doing that right? Yeah, nobody, nobody wants to be micromanaged ever again, ever again. I want to ask you, I'm being mind, I want to be mindful of your time as well. I want to ask you, what is your, what are some of your five-year goals right now? Oh, Oh, well, there's, there's lots yeah, of them. I'm, I'm <laughs> flipping it. I'm flipping it, Suzanne. I'm yeah. flipping it back on you. Well, you know, I could go right here to Lightyear and I could go to view my future and I could read my legacy statement, my vision statement. I could look at my personal health, career goals, practices, resources. But So here's a fun one that uh, Brett and I are invited to attend at least 10 marriages of people who meet on lightyear.co. So that's by October 8th of 2023. So that's a shorter term goal. <laughs> I just think that's too fun. That's so fun. <laughs> one of my four-year goals is that Lightyear Leadership is generating four global visioning events annually, which means that we have these gatherings where people come and talk and use the collective power of seeing a new possibility. I also would love to do a TED Talk. I feel like that would be a super great thing to do after my book is published. Not because I need to do a TED Talk. Actually, I'm much better at workshops and they have a sort of strict formula. So I'd rather find somebody else better than TED that allows people to do interactive workshops in 18 minutes or less. <laughs> maybe you, maybe that's what you create. Maybe, maybe that's, that's what I create. I tell you, because I think it's more fun. I just would really love to live to see the earth come to a more stable temperature. That's one of my larger, longer term personal goals. And so the things that Brett and I do, we focus on technologies that support that future for all you millennials and your babies. How, how old is your child? He's five. He's five. Get he, out! We'll tell you he's 35, but he's five. Well, he is. He's both. He is. Oh, he's both. Yeah, he's my he's granddaughter such a, is five, also. Man, there, that is a wild, yeah, magical and wild age. He thinks that. I mean, he's such an indigo child. That kid has so many. He, uh, oh yeah, he has. He's wild. He's amazing. He's really, really. So he's he's developing you as well. Yes. Oh, I learn more from him than I do from anyone else. Hmm. Easy. Yeah, that's so great. That's so great. I'm so happy for you. Oh, so well, you've got you. love in your life. I do and a wonderful him. partner, a for wonderful partner. your son in raising, and and how wonderful for him to have to have an abundance of parents that are loving. Oh, yeah. There's a there is a village raising that kid, <laughs> and it is it is amazing. We have like best friends that like help raise him. I mean, that kid is he has no shortage of love, and it shows in his personality a hundred percent. But I mean, we also again, like I said, we, I use so many of these teachings that you have like for him. We sit down and we talk about goals all the time. I mean, this kid will tell you about all the things he has planned and it's just really, it's really beautiful to watch. Well, I feel like the most important goal setting tools that we have in our Power My Future course, which is always available for free for anyone who wants to take it, is the power of knowing what you want, where you put everything you want inside the circle and what you don't want outside the circle. So that's something you could even do with your son, where he could, or he could collage it or put the objects, he could symbolize things. Because the circle as a geometry is sacred and protective, and it allows the human being to focus. And it activates the law of attraction so that 
we don't focus on what we don't want, which is what most people accidentally do because they don't have that tool. And then additionally, it's really the line of choice, which is being able to shift from reaction to choice. So in the early days at Lululemon, I could sense through Dorothy's work that a lot of the goals that the young people had written were what I call below the line of choice. They were there to prove or to compensate or to make up for what they felt in them was ugly or undeserving. And so I really wanted to bring that light your concept to Lululemon so that people could write goals from a level of self-acceptance and love, which would be from choice. And then the third thing that I found so helpful with writing goals and a vision and also raising children is Dorothy's principle of I am and you are the allowing, the accepting, the space making so that I can honor my own goals and vision and also honor yours and not need to be in a battle with you about it. (laughs) Abundance. Yeah. More abundance. Like that's, that's my biggest thing. I call it I call it radical listening and radical empathy. The more we can have, the more that we can radically listen to people and ask them, what do you want? What do you care about? What are you passionate about? And really take it on and receive it in a way without judgment, without trying to change it or fix it or one up it or feel have it like inferiority complex to it. That's radical. That that. I think is the purest and rawest form of love. The ability to truly do that with other human beings. It's so beautiful. And that's, I mean, you just said so many things in that, in what you just said that were just so powerful. That was one of them. And then when you talked about how people focus on what they don't want too much. Last year, I said something to someone. I said, I am done talking about all the things I'm not about. From now on, I am only talking about the things that I am about, things that I love, things that I'm excited for. I'm not talking about things that I don't like anymore. And that's, that's harder, you know, if we're talking, I mean, because I, I, I immediately think of, you know, police violence. I don't like police violence, but you know what I am about? And so it's switching things in my brain. So I'm not focused on the negative. Instead, I'm focusing on how we can how we can move forward and create a more beautiful space. It's just so, yeah, it's so powerful. It's so powerful. Keep keep doing it every season. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Every, all of my changing seasons, right? I want to ask you one more question. What are you right now most proud of? (laughs) So many people, so many things. Okay. And Danielle used that all too empowering word most. (laughs) So let me listen. What am I most proud of? I'm most proud of myself for trusting the community that I've been building and guiding to give them space to guide me in what is the future of light year? What is the future of the business model? Listening to our coaches, as you said, radical listening, helping. So instead of me, just get out of the way and let it, it's, it's like, stay with it. So I'm proud of staying with people and listening and allowing the future to guide while I continue to shine the light that I'm here to do. So I'm I'm proud of that. And it's not something I could have done five years ago. I've needed to work myself up to it like that, you know, grandma orca. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, especially as as your as your like organization gets bigger, as your business, as this company that you've created gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, one of the people I really love is John C. Maxwell, and he talks a lot about the most the best leaders are the ones who become increasingly unnecessary in their organization. And it's so powerful. And it seems like that is what the journey that you're on right now, not leaving, you're still necessary and you're still there, but you've created this network of coaches and human beings who are kind of just part of your pod, you know, as, as mama orca, you are, you have a pod now and what a beautiful thing that is. Yeah. And they, you know, they have the freedom to make choices and go explore other things or, or stay in home waters and, and I, I feel like that's, there's a new way of working that we're innovating. You know, I'm the daughter of an entrepreneur. 
and an inventor. And I feel, Danielle, that, you know, you and other Lululemon alumni, you know, I think of you as the Lululemon diaspora, you know, the people that are out graduated in the world, that you're all creating an expression of what you learned there and in creating a, uh, a new way of working and living. And we can see that evidenced by things as straightforward, even as cryptocurrency. <laughs> you know, I, I remember doing um, a fundraiser with Amanda Kasgar in 2014 at the Standard Hotel where the founders of SoulCycle were there just as they were. There was like three people that were starting the company. And we did all of these kinds of learnings and practices and things like that. And I, I would ask them, like the whole audience, you know, what do you want to live to see? And people would say things like to have the entire monetary system replaced with something more loving. Now, I had to catch myself going, oh, my God, the kids are really thinking big and just be there and do the radical listening and take my Sharpie out and write that on the paper. And I'll tell you what, it's happening. It's happening literally in front of our face. Nobody takes cash anymore. Nobody takes cash. Cryptocurrency is real. Yeah, it's happening. So wow. I, I am proud of the next generation. I've dedicated my life to them. And, you know, that's just it. Like, I, I have great faith in, in current and future generations to really fulfill plan A. And what I mean by plan A is, yeah, we can all have backup plans, but we integrate them into plan A. So instead of splitting our mind and saying, well, if I fail, I can always fall back on my waitressing job. <laughs> you know, that's what I mean by plan A. Yeah, plan A is it never has to go away. Even if you need to incorporate a plan B and a plan C, plan A is still there. You're just kind of, you're working your waitressing job while still having plan A be the exactly. plan. Exactly. You don't give up the dream. That's the difference. When people say, well, I, and then, and then they let that part die and go here. So I know that if I keep doing this to help people take all those pieces and get it here to that plan A, that that's how. That's how we all win, you know. That's how we all win, and that's, that's how what we, we all want. Win. That's how that's what we want, right? I, I I sometimes see people that are are fighting with other people, so wasting so much energy, like beating other people down or criticizing other people's choices. And I always just think, don't you want everyone to win? Imagine a planet where everyone wins. That that's where I want to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, what I've come to understand and have compassion for is that whatever comes out of a person's mouth shows you their belief system. So likely what they say to another person is what they believe about themselves quietly. And there's this deep, internal, dark dialogue that people like you and I can have the compassion to help someone shift and make a new choice. So before I uh, let you go, we're going to play a game. I don't know if okay. you know about, I don't know if you know about my game, but it's a fun game. Uh, but I first want you to tell everyone where, so you have a book coming out, you have Light Your Leadership. If somebody wants to get a hold of you and learn from you, take your courses, work with your company, read your book, tell us all the places we can find you. Plug yourself, Suzanne Conrad. <laughs> okay. So we have Light Your Coach Training, which will start on Earth Day. So I'm not quite sure exactly when this podcast comes out. So perhaps it'll come out before that. If not, certainly find us at lightyear.co. My book, Get There Now, will be on shelves in September. I will be going around the country doing workshops to teach people Get There Now, which is an innovative technique to get a positive mindset very quickly and have the choices and decisions that underline it. And anyone at any time can join our community by starting with Power My Future. And I've got these fun videos there that you can watch and you can create your future and you can see me with my uh, COVID haircut, <laughs> which was kind of bad. <laughs> but I, I, I think I'll keep it for nostalgic reasons. Yeah, so, you should. Yeah, yeah. So we have the whole gamut of things that are free and, and just take a little bit of time all the way to spending years with me while I can. 
Yeah. Amazing. I am um, for you, anybody listening. I'm going to, we will put all of these links and places to find her in our show notes. So you can go and just click right from our show notes. Okay. So the game is called quick fire questions. Okay. I, you have one minute and I ask you as many quick fire questions as possible. And you give me the very first thing on your mind without explanation. Okay. How do you feel about that? Ready? Oh, she's ready. Okay. Here we go. Favorite book? The Bible. Favorite color? Purple. Best piece of advice you've ever gotten? Love yourself. Favorite food? Salmon. You could go anywhere in the world right now. Where are you going? Ethiopia. You're going to a deserted island. You can take three things with you. What are they? (laughs) Oh, some music, some food that can replicate itself. And can I bring a person as one of the things? Yes. I'll bring MacGyver. I'll yes. Bring on my husband. Yeah. You, know, I was say, you definitely need MacGyver on the island. I need MacGyver. Yeah. Uh, would you rather go to a tropical beach or a mountain? Tropical beach. Would you rather take a private jet or a private yacht? Private jet. Would you rather see a sunrise or a sunset? A sunrise. And if you could give one person one piece of advice right now in this moment, who would it be and what would you say? The piece of advice that I'd give to you, and I say it with all sweetness and kindness, given the power that you're entering in your life, I'd like you to listen to the recording and notice the places where you use the word but and see if you could replace it with and and give yourself a but diet. And I believe you'll find that your power will increase fivefold or more. You just called me out in the best way. And I'm so glad you did because Luca calls me on this. My best friend in the entire world, Chris Chandler, does this. And he never says but. He only says and. And it actually is something I'm working on. I'm already on the butt diet, Suzanne. And it's the butt diet. Well, I'm your buddy. I'm your butt buddy. I appreciate you. I appreciate... I appreciate radical honesty. So thank you for that. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your heart. I know that so many people are going to hear this episode and just listen to it over and over and over and over again. So I want to thank you. Time is a gift and you've given me yours and I'm grateful, my friend. Oh, you're so welcome. And may your work flourish. Mm. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by the Upstarter Pods Network. Obviously, it takes a village to create a podcast. And if you have a podcast or if you are looking to start a podcast, maybe you just need some coaching and some advice, go check them out. Email chase at upstarterpods.com or you can slide into their DMs at Upstarter Pods on Instagram. Get your questions answered. Let them know I sent you. That woman, I swear, has just floated into my space. And the fact that she called me out, guys, I've been working on not saying but so much and switching my butts with ands. If you haven't tried it, you have to. It will change your life. And it's harder than you think. (laughs) But we choose our hard. So it's not harder than I think. It's just something I'm committed to. Please go back and listen to that episode a thousand times. Everything she said was gold. I adore that woman. I adore the things that she teaches. When I say that her teachings have absolutely manifested in my life and helped to create the woman I am today, I am not kidding. I am obsessed and I'm so, so, so grateful that she gave us her time today. As always, we have episodes every Tuesday and Friday. So our next episode will be on Friday with me. It's an unplugged episode, little sweet nothings into your ear for a few minutes. If you're loving what you're hearing, share this with someone, send this episode to somebody who needs it and make sure you're subscribed to the podcast. Give us a rating if you're on Apple Podcasts, which is our preferred platform, but we are everywhere you listen to podcasts. If you are listening on Apple Music, give us a rating. Make sure you write us a review. You can always come find me on Instagram. My personal account is Danielle underscore on the daily. The podcast is at on the daily pod. Slide into our DMs. Tell us what you loved about this episode. If you learned anything, if you are in the Lululemon family, we want to hear from you. If we have a guest, if you are a guest, if you know a guest that we should have, if you have a topic that we should talk about, tell us everything or just say hi. 
I love a good hey. And we will see you on Friday for an unplugged episode and then next Tuesday for another interview. I hope wherever you are, you are having the day that you need and we will talk soon. Bye.